This is a lecture outline 10, covering chapters 6 and 7, uh, which deal with bonding. And uh, the first thing we have to know about bonding is what's called the octet rule. Chemical bonding involves each atom gaining or losing, losing or sharing electrons to get the same valence electrons as the nearest noble gas. This is called the octet rule because noble gases, except for helium, have eight valence electrons. So what we're going to see throughout uh, the rest of the course, and mainly in this chapter, is that bonding occurs so that each element has eight valence electrons, except those that are closest to helium, which will want the same valence electrons as helium, as we'll see. Now, um, before we talk about bonding, let's talk about something called a Lewis dot formula, and that's gonna be for atoms. They display the valence electrons as dots around the chemical symbol. And so let's do two examples here. One is the chlorine atom. That's going to be an atom with 17 electrons. Uh, and it's in group seven and group 17. And what we said previously was that the seven or the singles digit in the 17 that means how many valence electrons each atom in this entire column has. So the chlorine atom will have seven valence electrons. And those valence electrons will be dots around the chemical symbol Cl for chlorine. And what we tend to do is we tend to put four groups of two as uh, they go. And we'll talk about more about that later. And since chlorine has seven valence electrons, there are three groups of two and one group of one on the north, south, east, and west uh, sides of the chemical symbol Cl. So chlorine has seven valence electrons. According to the octet rule, it wants eight, and it will participate in bonds to make to get eight. Sodium, on the other hand, is in group one, meaning it has one valence electron. And therefore, in a Lewis dot formula, it has one dot. Now, uh, it wants uh, to get an octet similar to the octet of uh, the closest noble gas, which for sodium is going to go backwards to neon. And so what's going to happen is that sodium will lose an electron to become sodium plus. in something reminiscent of an oxidation half reaction where it's losing an electron. Now if we look at the electron configuration of sodium atom versus sodium ion, we see that sodium atom has neon 3s1. Lose that one electron to become sodium ion then we do indeed have the electron configuration for neon, the noble gas. And so that's why sodium forms the uh, plus one ion. On the other hand, chlorine needs one more electron in a type of, rea uh, a type of reaction that looks like a uh, reduction half reaction now we have chloride ion minus with eight valence electrons. And in fact, now these two will form an ionic bond. And that's why an ionic bond is called an electron transfer bond. Because you start with atoms, there's a transfer of electrons away from sodium and to chlorine to make ions. Those ions are then attracted to each other to form an ionic bond. Okay, and that's what uh, metals and nonmetals have been doing since the beginning of the course. They've been uh, 
forming ionic bonds, sodium as sodium plus when it forms an ion, chlorine as chloride, Cl minus. Now, when two nonmetals, um, in order to meet the octet rule, they will form covalent bonds, co meaning sh uh, shared and valent meaning valence electrons. And uh, I've come up with a set of rules for writing Lewis structures for compounds involving covalent bonds. So you'll see that these involve uh, typically two, but uh, two or more nonmetals sharing electrons, and we'll be able to show you how uh, when you share electrons, uh, you will get the eight that each of the elements wants, um, and we'll show you how to do that as well. So start with the octet rule. That means that we want uh, them to have eight electrons each, and then steps for writing Lewis structures. These are my steps. So there are other ways of doing this. As long as you get the right answer, there are many ways to do this. But this is how I'm going to do it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count up the total number of valence electrons. So this is step one. I'm going to do that for the example for the carbonate ion. That's what we're going to be doing the Lewis structure for. So we've got carbonate ion. If we looked at our periodic table, we would see that each carbon atom has four valence electrons. There are three oxygens, and each oxygen has six valence electrons. And then we will see that there's a two minus charge on this. So in order to complete the Lewis structure correctly, we have to add two electrons. Electrons are negative things, and therefore, even though it's two minus, that means add two electrons. So then add them up, 18, 19, 20, 24. Uh, you can call them electrons or valence electrons. They're going to be the electrons that help us complete octets. Then we're going to place the least electronegative atom except hydrogen as the central atom. Hydrogen will only ever form one bond. And therefore, it will never be a center atom. It will always form one bond. To be a center atom, you have to form at least two bonds. Place the least electronegative atom. Okay, electronegativity trends. This is where this becomes important. So as you go to the left and down, electronegativity decreases. So if we have two elements, carbon and oxygen, then carbon will be less electronegative. It turns out that fluorine is the most electronegative element. Oxygen is second, and chlorine and nitrogen are tied for third, uh, which when you need them, you will have the electronegativity scores. Uh, however, what's clear from this case is that carbon is less than oxygen, less electronegative. So place the least electronegative atom as the central atom. So that means I'm going to put the oxygens around it. That's step two. Connect atoms by single bond. Each bond is two shared electrons. So I'll rewrite where I left off in step two. Now step three is going to be to have a single bond. Each bond is two shared electrons. Each bond is a dash. or a hyphen, or whatever, it's a line. And the way that I do it is that, remember, we started with 24 valence electrons to put into this. I do not think of the electrons as belonging to any of the one atoms. I think they belong to the molecule. So step four says, sprinkle remaining valence electrons around the outside atoms first to complete octets. Well. Here's where we were before. Now I have two, four, six. I'm going to do two more for eight, 10, 12. This oxygen on the left now has an octet. I have a total of 12 electrons in my Lewis structure. 14, 16, 18. Now we have an octet down for this oxygen. 20, 22, 24. 
And the key part of Lewis structures is you can only put the exact number of valence electrons in the compound. So we have only 24 valence electrons. And what we can see is that carbon, the center atom, does not have an octet. That's okay, we have more steps here. We do want everybody to have an octet by the end uh, because the octet rule rules. However, another thing that uh, is uh, very important, I don't know, maybe it rules too, is that you only use the same number of valence electrons that you have available. Okay, so now we're done with step four. I imagine that I'm sprinkling the electrons around the outside atoms um, because, again, the electrons don't belong. We, we did count them up from individual atoms at the beginning, but then I think it's best to just assume that all of the electrons belong to the uh, molecule, or in this case, ion. Now, for step five, make double or triple bonds as needed to complete octets. I'll write in blue where step four left off. Okay, so that's where we left off. Now, we need carbon as the center atom to have an octet. It only has one, two, three bonds. Each bond is two shared electrons, so that's two, four, six electrons around it. So what we're going to do is we're going to form one double bond. And it doesn't matter which one you choose, and we'll talk more about that when we talk about resonance in a later part of uh, the, the lecture outline 10. But just choose one. It doesn't matter which one for now. And that arrow signifies moving these two electrons to be a double bond. And uh, I like to keep track of where the electrons came from, but again, as long as the correct number of electrons are around each atom, we're gonna be fine. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to look for octets. We have, and we get to count shared electrons get counted for both atoms or for each atom. For uh, both atoms. So if we look at this oxygen, we have two, four, six, eight electrons around it. If we look at this oxygen, we have uh, one bond, which is two, four, six, eight. That is an octet. Two, four, six, eight. Octet over here. And the central carbon, two, four, six, eight there. And so everybody has an octet. That's what you're shooting for with the Lewis structure. Uh, and we've arrived there, that's step five. Now, since this is an ion, place we do have to do step six. It says place square brackets if it's an ion. I'll do that part in blue. So square brackets look like the same kind of brackets that you would use for molarity concentration. And two minus up here. And so in square brackets, this Lewis structure with the two minus is our final answer. So our first